Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and the good evening to you, the people of this tube of ours. Hope you are well today, hope you're feeling grand. Today, we're looking at this guitar. This was sold to one of my friends as a Randy Rhodes Gibson Les Paul. And it isn't. This is a Chibson knockoff. So uh, basically today what I want to talk about is some of the things that make this a knockoff so it never happens to anybody out there who gets kind of like, um, gets fooled by one of these fakes. So I'm going, to, I'm going to kind of talk about some of the key things really that kind of stand out at Arm Gibson, uh, as, as best, to my knowledge, anyway, as best to my knowledge. So uh, yeah, so let's get to it. Okay, so things to look for in a fake Les Paul. Starting with the selector switch. This is not a Gibson selector switch at all. This is an Epiphone selector switch, which is mostly this guitar is an Epiphone, but this selector switch is not a Gibson selector switch. It's too um, kind of like, a, I could say like it sticks up too far. Gibson selector switches are a lot, kind of, they're, more, they're a bit more flush with the body and also this disc looks too cheap to be Gibson. Gibson ones are look a hell of a lot more fancy than that. The writing is smaller. And this being a Randy Rhodes signature, as it claims to be, this should be gold. That should be gold. And this is quite ornate on Randy's Les Paul. So that's a, that's kind of a, a good giveaway there that this isn't a Gibson. And it also feels really nasty. Feels really cheap. Whereas Gibson ones feel like, you know, well, they, they feel like quality because they are quality, whereas these ones are, are just not very good at all. I mean, that it doesn't feel like a like a proper one. So that's kind of like telltale one. If you see like you know these kind of like um, let me turn it around. If you see this kind of, uh, I hope you can see that. Yeah, there you go. Uh, this kind of this select switch disc and the switch tip doesn't really give it away, but the actual kind of like um, the nut and like you know that that if it's too if it's big like that, then it's guaranteed it's not a Gibson. Um, next thing I want to talk about is the bridge. Gibson bridges do not have the slot screw at all, uh, and this bridge, if I can get it off, is actually um, been mounted wrong. Uh, I reckon somebody's had this guitar all apart to refinish it in this 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 core, which I'll talk about in a minute. But what they've done is they've remounted this screw, the height uh, height adjustment screw, at an angle. So it actually kind of like instead of being perfectly straight like that, it's slightly at an angle. So if I screw that all all the way down and then screw this one all the way down, even on my Epiphone, this now just drops on. If I put it on one side it will not fit on the other it just won't and if you can see it doesn't even match up there's like a gap in there i hope you can see that let's say there's like um about a couple about a millimeter and a half maybe gap between that and that so you have to have the action high because of that so that is another telltale sign the fact that the, the bridge on the bottom doesn't say gibson is another telltale sign i mean it, it, it's it's not even Epiphone, this isn't. I, I don't know what this is. It's some kind of uh, cheap Chinese make of bridge, but that is not even an Epiphone bridge. Same thing goes with the um, the tailpiece. This isn't this isn't Epiphone. This is, again, some kind of cheap knockoff. It's not heavy at all. There's no weight to this metal. It's very, very cheap metal. And I feel that I could probably scratch it if I did it with my, with my, with my nail. So that's pretty cheap. Uh, the fact that these are kind of like, you know, pretty pretty weak as well but like i say the the gibson ones do not have the slot screw they're just like a um like a screw kind of shaft sticks out the top and the bridge itself just has a hole like this like in this one but it's a lot smaller and it just slots over the top and the disc is not attached to the actual screw on the on the bridge so that's another thing to look for the bridge um the pots you can always tell good quality pots these aren't, you can hear them squeak, hopefully. They don't, hopefully you can hear the noise they make. I mean, it's it definitely not, not right noise. Uh, the, the gold speed dials aren't actually um, on this guitar. I put them on as an optional extra for the owner of this guitar, just to make it look a bit more Randy Rhodes, because Randy's Les Paul actually had the gold speed knobs. 
uh, and I've put them on as a little option, optional extra for him if he wishes to keep them. Um, uh, another telltale sign are obviously always the pickups. Um, these ones, which I'll give you a close up in a sec, are Epiphone pickups. And like I say, most of this guitar, body wise, I would say up to about here, is probably Epiphone. The neck isn't ebony. I don't know what wood this is. It's not even. It doesn't even look like rosewood. I don't know what the neck is. It's very strange. Um, you kind of compare if you look through like a magnifying glass at uh, rosewood, and then you look through the magnifying glass. It's it's a very funny wood. But the headstock is another telltale sign. As I say, it, this is not a Gibson Les Paul custom headstock. But I say I will come back to that in a sec. Uh, but like I said, you know that that neck is not ebony, and you can tell ebony. A mile off because it's got this kind of real kind of kind of almost mirror-esque kind of sheen to it anyway i'm just going to show you the uh pickups quickly and before i get too ahead of myself and uh yeah let's just give you a close up with the pickups so yes yeah, like these are f-own pickups so well you can see there you go yeah so there we go that's a close up of the uh bridge pickup f-own r standard for rear i do believe and they're not even in the best condition i mean they're not it look like the, the covers have been replaced and it's been very very shoddily done so that's the bridge pickup and again the same thing goes with the neck pickup that's uh oop that's it's hard to get these out well i'm filming same thing again f phone f a front pickup and again very 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 not not a good condition at all i have cleaned these up as best i can but they're still you know it, they're still very very grubby and I say the wires, I mean, you can tell the wires off a million miles that the wires aren't Gibson. Normally, the, the wires on a Gibson are normally fairly, uh, um, they're kind of like cotton wrapped ones. They're very, just really high quality. And I say, there's no, unfortunately, there's nothing on this guitar that's high quality. There's not, there's no free ply scratch plate. So, you've been a Randy Rhodes signature, it's just a Randy Rhodes here engraved into the scratch plate. It doesn't. Uh, the neck, uh, I'll tell you what, let me do. Okay, so close up of the neck, you can kind of see. I don't know what the wood is. It isn't rosewood. I can. I'm, I don't. I mean, I mean, I don't know if it's rosewood. It could be rosewood, but if it look, if it's rosewood, it's not like no rosewood I've ever seen in my life. It's a very strange looking wood, and somebody has dyed it to make it look black, like ebony, but it's definitely not. And I say the 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 mother of pearl inlays, the mother of fake inlays in this case, they're not big enough. They should go at least a little bit longer. The frets, you can see, are kind of like, um, well, they're not silver, they're all really kind of like very bad looking. And if you run your finger upside, it's it's very, very rough on the sides where the frets are hanging over. They didn't stain the sides. They missed a bit of stain there, you can see. They didn't stain the sides of the binding. So I don't know if they probably stained it first and then refretted it or what. Same thing goes for the nut. They didn't stain the nut. Uh, so let's talk about the color quickly. Okay, the colour. This is not the colour of a Randy Rose signature Les Paul at all. Randy's Les Paul, yes, was yellowed, but never this yellow. This is banana yellow. Um, and this is just, um, yeah, it's, it's way too yellow. I mean, even if it's spent like, or if this was like a 70s Les Paul and it spent all its life in a smoky club, it would still never be this yellow, I don't think. Um... I've seen extremely yellow Gibson Les Paul customs, but this is just something else. And I say the fact that the binding isn't gone and and the 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 uh, square inlays aren't kind of discord and the nuts definitely not discord is another kind of sign. You know, this is not what it appears to be. Um, so yeah, let's let's move on to the headstock and let's uh, show you that. Okay, the headstock of this Randy Rhodes Chipson. Um, and I say they're called Chipsons because they're a Chinese Gibson. Uh, the headstock immediately looks wrong. It's too long. Uh, I do believe, judging by measurements, this is about maybe just about a centimeter longer than a real Gibson one. And it just looks the machine is just sort of bunched up, and it just seems really like stretched and long. It doesn't seem right. The truss rod cover is kind of like sanded down it also is flat to the nut which all gibsons aren't they like you know they should be a little bit up they should be about maybe about a quarter to maybe a half a centimeter gap between the base of the truss rod and the base uh the front of the nut there so that's too close so that's another telltale sign um the grovers rattle 
Grovers do not rattle. They are really solid machine heads, and these, you know, these rattle like um, like a children's plaything. Um, also, the Gibson logo. It, 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 I don't know what it is about the Gibson logo. I can't actually come out and put my finger on why it looks wrong, but it just looks wrong to me. I don't know what it is, but it just looks wrong. Uh, also, the diamond inlay there, that looks totally ski whiff and and higgledy piggledy to me. It does it does doesn't seem to look right. You've got silver um bushings on the on the machine heads as well, not gold. Um so there's another telltale sign is the truss rod cover is too close to the nut. I say the machine heads should not rattle like that. Uh, let's flip it around. Um they've gone as far as to put the volute in, which is this thing here, which is all um you know 70s Les Paul customs would have had. So that's kind of that yeah that's period correct. Uh, Grover machine heads, but they're fakes. The serial number RR089. If you look on Google Images, there's about three or four images of the uh, uh, Randy Rhodes Les Paul fake, and they've all got the same serial number RR089. So that's another telltale thing. And um, I find it hard to believe that I, I don't know what the the actual Gibson serial number was on the Randy Rhodes uh, uh, tribute Les Paul was, but that's I don't think that's what it was. Uh, so fake Grovers. I mean, they, they feel pretty good, but um, they're not Grovers. Uh, the neck, again, it it's a nice neck. It's got a lovely neck on it, but again, you know, it's definitely not a, a Gibson feeling neck at all. It, it's more of an Epiphone feel neck that is. Uh, another thing to note is the headstock is not made out of the same wood as the body. The headstock is more of a kind of like a um, like a what's it called? It's like a plywood almost. It, it's totally different wood to the rest of the body. The rest of the body is actually pretty, pretty solid. But the headstock, if you take the truss rod cover off, um, it's not. And what they actually do is kind of like remove the uh, the Epiphone headstock because uh, most Gibsons and most Epiphones like have a headstock glued on here, and there's like a little join that looks like that where they basically pop the headstock on onto the neck um, and I think basically what they do is they basically just remove the F and headstock and and shove this you know uh, made up Gibson one on it's definitely not a reshaped Epiphone headstock because it's way too long um, so that's definitely not that um, you've got the silver back plates as you can see mirrored they're right Randy Rhodes did have silver back plates but I don't understand why you put silver back plates on and then put black knobs on there and not have this gold. I mean, it, it, it's just screaming, I'm a fake. Um, you know, a lot, but the thing is, like I say, it, it's, it's screaming a fake to me, but to some people, and especially to some people who maybe, you know, maybe have never seen a Gibson Les Paul or, an, uh, or a, a real Gibson or, or don't see Gibsons a lot, this uh, could catch you out very easily. In all fairness, I think it, before I started kind of uh when, it, when i first started playing guitar this would have caught me out i would have thought this was a gibson and the price uh the person sold it to my friend for would have seemed like amazing so like you know it, it you, you've got to be so careful in this day and age there's a weird kind of anomaly in the lacquer there which is a bit bit dodgy um but yeah i mean that, that we're getting, that's the reason for doing this video is like you know you've got to be so careful and that's, that's the reason I want to do this video I don't have any problem with these kind of guitars I love these kind of guitars and I bet anyone who wants to get this restrung and set up I bet this sounds amazing which I will do a separate video on like demoing it but what I have a problem with is people selling them as the real thing to people who and, and fooling people and catching people out or selling to people who, who don't know better uh, it's not fair and you don't do it because these guitars, to me, are fun. You know, the fact it says Gibson on the headstock, this is kind of like a... Um, this, this gives you, gives, these cheap uh, Chinese guitars give you the ability to own guitars you'd never be able to before, because the actual real Randy Rhodes Gibson Les Paul runs into the region of about three to four thousand pounds, depending on where you find it. And, you know, it, it, like I say, it's proper Gibson. It probably even runs more than that, you never know. But, like... Um, but no, these these are a good kind of like um, if you haven't got a lot of money like me and uh, like people like especially you know in this day and age um, these are a good alternative to you know, if you can't afford a Gibson you can still kind of go and also you're not you know overly precious about taking it to a gig you know because it's not real <laughs> you know it's it's pretty 
if somebody robs off of it, they got they got a not very good deal. I mean, you're going to be annoyed, but anyway, I'm rambling on. But just to recap, you know, I say also the pots are cheap. Um, one thing to do if somebody's trying to sell you like a Gibson Les Paul or a Fender Telecaster or a Fender Strat or any guitar in the world that and it and it, it the price doesn't match up to what the guitar is. Like if somebody's selling like a a 64 Fender Strat for 500 quid or a, or a 69 59 Les Paul for 500 quid you know alarm bells should go off at that and the best thing to do is to go and see the guitar and have it apart and really look at it I mean take the pickups out the pickups are easy to get out on a Les Paul and on a Strat and on any Fender you know four screws there take it out see what it says on the back you know do your research on the internet it's you know the internet is you know so valuable these days in, in looking these kind of things and i say look for some telltale signs like i say the selector switch uh disc the selector switch kind of um the nut there the bridge if it's a gibson it, it wouldn't be slot like that hopefully you can see it, it wouldn't be slot like that the hardware would be a lot better it, it would feel good it, it will make that noise on the pots uh, the frets would not be sharp unless it's had a really really bad refret which um, I i'd find very hard to believe the neck you would just know kind of thing really it's thing and the headstock as well is a good giveaway i mean that just looks too long to be a gibson headstock really so so yeah i mean that, they're kind of like key things really so anyway i hope uh, i hope this video has been informative as i've tried to be like i say i've got no problem with these guitars i just have a problem with people trying to sell them for uh, as the real thing that really gets my goat out those i really don't like that and i say i really for sorry for my friend who kind of got duped by this because he doesn't deserve it he's a really nice guy and he doesn't deserve that but either way i'm going to get this guitar playing amazing for him so he's got a really good guitar out of it at the end of the day so all is well so thank you very much for watching this video i hope um like i said i hope it's been informative and i will see you again for a, a, either a demo disc guitar or another one well, goodbye now have a good morning afternoon and good evening bye live longer and prosper